Fifty men on a dead man's chest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Ha <laughs> ha! Welcome back, YouTube. Mr. Broken Terrain has finished me ship. I invite you to come along and watch as he paints it up nice and pretty like. Ha <laughs> ha! All this and more right after the drop. Well, thank you, Captain, for that interesting intro. So let's get right to it. We're going to start by putting that black magic base coat on all of our ship pieces. This is going to harden the foam and at the same time put a base of black to everything. And that's going to help with the paints later on. Everything's going to feel just a little darker, a little dingier maybe a little grimier, and that's going to work to our advantage. So here you see I am just working the base coat, which is a 50% Mod Podge and a 50% black acrylic paint. And uh, for those of you paying attention in the earlier videos, I never did glue that granny grating in for those windows, and this is exactly why. I'm going to take those pieces out, and that way I can thoroughly coat the ship with my black magic base coat. Afterwards, once everything is dried and I've painted the granny grating up to look like a wrought iron, I'll glue those back into place. But that's way at the end of this video. Until then, here are some shots of me applying the black magic base coat to various parts of the ship. Here we see the portholes, and those were particularly difficult because of the deep grooves. Uh, they would also prove to be difficult painting later on. Here we see the main deck of the ship. And uh, at first I thought I might not paint the wood with the base coat, but then I decided, you know what? Uh, I think I want to and I went back in and I got all the ladders and and handrails and everything else I'm applying the base coat to the captain's deck and just making sure everything gets a good coat once everything has been coated I decided to do the gold trim first Uh, this is always a fun step uh, when you start painting on the on the black uh, based piece because the colors immediately add separation, depth, and definition to your mini or your terrain. And this was no different. Uh, you can see the different sections of the captain's deck start to come alive and, and jump out at you. As, uh, as everything is being separated by that king's gold. Some parts were easier to paint than others. Uh, this piece had a lot of depth and angles and painting the straight on surfaces was easy, but you needed to make sure you got the little corners and bends. And some of those were more difficult than others. But I told myself not to worry about any kind of mistakes or mishaps, that I could correct those later on in the painting. And I did do that, as a matter of fact. There were several, several different coats that went on, and uh, I was able to go over the piece several times, making sure that I didn't miss anything. And to be honest, I probably still missed something. The ship was highly detailed, and every time I looked at it, I found a new piece that I had missed. So it is what it is. Remember, we're doing this to have fun. We loved crafting, and uh, and no one should beat themselves up over the details. If you ever not, uh, stop having fun crafting, 
anything, you should take a break and relax and come back to it when your mind is clear. The wooden pieces had a lot of difficulty accepting that yellow and I would go back in multiple times. Here you see me applying a second coat to some of the pieces that weren't as gold and as yellow as I had wished them to be. I want to thank everybody for offering color suggestions in the comment section of the third video. Uh, I took all those to heart, came up with a color scheme, and then ultimately my wife told me what colors to paint the boat. And uh, well, she wins every time. Uh, but I like her, her color choices and they end up looking really good. Ultimately, we ended up going with a gold trim with a dark bare wood for the decks and the hull. And the decorative elements would get a dark blue. And we would finish everything off with some trim pieces being done in black. I had initially wanted a brighter ship, but on a view of source materials and things, I thought this darker look uh, might be more realistic. And I think, it, I think I've pulled it off. You can see me carefully painting around some of the base details and the trim work. Uh, I did my best, but ultimately I would go in several times and fix any uh, stray brush marks and strokes on wrong colors. I am showing the captain's deck here uh, because it's very intricate. There's lots of parts and pieces to it and I thought this was one of the better pieces to show off how I painted all that detail. I decided to paint the decking as well and I'm gonna paint it with that same dark brown. Then I moved on to the foredeck and once again using smaller brushes near the gold trim and just to carefully applying that burnt sienna brown. Painting really is one of my favorite steps. It's when all that hard work really starts to pay off. All that texture that you've laid in, all the shaping. And here's a shot of me painting up the hull. This is up at uh, four deck piece, but I also do it on the rest of the hull as well. finish it up with a bit of painting on the underside and then I start on the blue I did my best to apply it very carefully so as not to have to repaint too much but my painting skills are uh, somewhere near intermediate and amateur so there was some repainting and fixing along the way but i did a pretty good job and with that blue down everything really starts to pop for a touch of color on the top of the ship i did the steering wheel and the, uh, the connection piece to it with that blue as well and that was just going to add a lot of visual interest 
on top of that deck. Then it was on to the poop. Gotta have a, a well-painted, nice-looking poop. And I was gonna paint my poop deck in that same blue. First that top decorative oval, half oval, and then the rest, both inside and out. Again, just being very careful to uh, control the brush and not go into the other colors painted. Then perhaps some of the hardest painting for the model, these tiny little decorative sections on the back deck. I took my time with this. Uh, it was real slow going, but I was in no hurry. I had come this far and put this much work into it. I wanted to make sure it looked really good when painted. Doing the painting for the trim work on the deck piece. Doing my best not to paint into the yellow trim. And some of the more difficult painting here, fitting that blue into the spaces where the portholes are. Once the blue was all knocked out, it was time to get to some dry brushing. So I took a lighter blue, filled my paintbrush with paint, got most of it off on a paper towel, and then you lightly brush over your textures. And as you can see in the video, the raised parts of the texture pick up that, that lighter, brighter color, and it acts as a highlight and starts to create some definition. This is where your texture really shines, and this is why you take the time uh, to always focus on texture when creating terrain. The lighter color also works well highlighting those edges, which create even more definition. You see as I drag the brush down across those slatted pieces of wood, that they catch the edges and corners and it makes everything pop. Now I go in and hit the edges of the steering wheel and this is going to define its shape for your eye. Once all the blue was done, I chose a honey brown color and went back in to do the same thing with that natural wood. And you can see it picks up all the details, those grooves separating the boards, the little nail holes that we put in way back in uh, video one. And even our uh, wooden deck, as that lighter color hits all those edges, it's just gonna make everything so much more defined for your eye. I decided to do the doors in that same honey brown color, but without the darker sienna, burnt sienna first. And this was going to create a different uh, wood tone for these doors. I wanted them to look lighter. I was proud of the work I had put in on them, and I want them to remain a visual interest to the ship. Here you can see me putting on that honey brown on the hull. And it's just picking up all that wood grain and all that texture. And it really pays off. At this point, most of the painting is done. And I'm going to take those pieces of granny grating that I've cut for windows. And I'm going to dust them with a gun metal. And this is going to give them the look of like a wrought iron. Uh, I'm not too worried about the 
total coverage of the pieces, I actually want some of that black to show through. Now that the doors are dry, I go back in with this same gunmetal color and I'm going to paint the straps and the handles and, uh, and any other metal work on the ship. as the uh, painting continues my excitement builds and builds and I as I was preparing to cut this final video I started looking up sea shanties and uh, became rather obsessed with some pirate songs uh, this build was a blast and all the work and effort put in pays off in the end and I, I can't begin to tell you how absolutely tickled pink I am at this. So my final color is black. Nothing fancy, just black. And it really uh, sets the model off just right. I take this black and I go in and I paint all the spindles for the walkways and rails. And it looks amazing against that king's gold color for the trim. And then finally in preparation for returning those grain engraving pieces to the windows, I color the backs of those windows with that black to cover up any of my overpainting from the gold. Oh yes, and then the trim work. I had forgotten about the trim work. How could I forget about this trim work? This is one of those decisions you make where it sounds good at the time and then you start doing it and it's a, a nightmare. But I'm glad I continued. Uh, the entire cabins, uh, the captain's cabin and then the lower deck uh, with its uh, decorations all get this treatment and uh, it was messy at first and it did take a lot of extra time but I think it's worth it the final product with uh, the decorative uh, black and blue trim on the boat just looks amazing so don't be afraid to give yourself a little extra work you might regret it at the moment but in the end, it will pay off. I'm finishing up the spindles for the walkway. And here's the trim from the deck. Just some little teardrop ovals and triangles, nothing too fancy. But when painted up in different colors, uh, it really does look impressive. Finally, uh, a dot of black paint in the middle of those portholes, which had been painted with that gunmetal. Finally, getting to some of those finishing touches, it's time to return all those grainy grading pieces back to their locations. I turn once again to a glue that is super. This particular brand is crafted by a gorilla. I had a great luck with the last batch, and so I went out and bought a new one in a container uh, that claimed it was pen-like and good for crafting. And I'm going to agree. I'm pretty pleased with this product. Nice job. Once I get them glued into place, I use a paintbrush to kind of poke the corners and edges down and hold things in place while the glue dries. This was a very effective strategy. And in this way, I didn't have to worry about gluing my fingers to the ship.
This piece is already looking great. And with these two window pieces back in position, man, oh man, I am just thrilled. I was about to say careful application of super glue, but um, nah, I was pretty sloppy with it this time. But it's all right, it works out. Boy, that looks good. And here's some beauty shots of the ship all painted up, but not quite finished. We're going to go back in with a black wash and just give everything a darker, grimier look. But why the super glue was drying, I went back into my sails and my rigging and I painted all of my blocks black to match the trim color. I was pleased at how well the black covered. Um, there's still a little bright color coming from the insides of the beads, but that's something that I can live with. I don't mind that whatsoever. Then it's on to applying my homemade wash. As you can see, I've got it in a drip bottle and I just pour it on very liberally and then brush it around and, uh, and get that color soaking everywhere. And this black wash is going to seek into all the cracks and crevices. It's going to add a nice uh, dark contrast to pieces and give a, everything a lived in or dirtier look. So where the ship was very bright yellow and bright blue, the wash is going to take it down a notch and add a realistic look to it. Now that the main deck has been uh, washed, it's onto the floor deck. And same thing with this piece the liberal use of my homemade black wash. Don't forget that front uh, front deck. I call that the Sprite, the Sprite deck. I go real heavy on these doors because at the moment, they're simply just a honey brown. So I was relying heavily on the wash, and then uh, I will do a highlight step after for texture on those doors. You can see from this angle here how the wash kind of knocks those colors down just a little bit and adds a, a certain dinginess of, of realism to the piece. I've said it before and I'll say it at least one more time. They call it talent in a bottle and I certainly agree. Uh, you can of course buy washes at the store, but they and they are very good washes, but they tend to be smaller jars of wash mainly for painting miniatures. I would highly suggest if you're going to do uh, terrain pieces that you make your own wash to save yourself a lot of money. Finally, we've reached the last step and that is to go back in and highlight. I'm using Apple Barrel's Vanilla Ice Cream, one of my absolute favorite colors and a go-to for almost every project. You're going to fill the brush with color, wipe most of it off on a paper towel, and then you're just going to lightly go in and brush all the edges. And you can see as I do this that it makes all the edges pop with that very light off-white color. And this is just going to help define everything for your eye. It seems like a very little step, and to be honest, you could skip it. But in a project like this, this big, this beautiful, we're going to go all the way. And that means hitting it up with the highlight.
and you can tell it just really defines those pieces. If you put in all this work, you might as well go the extra step. I'm just so excited. My biggest project to date, multiple techniques and materials that I had never used before. And let me tell you, YouTube, I am pumped with how it turned out. And I am so excited to be able to share this with you. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the series and I, I hope you love this ship as much as I do. Finally, just a healthy highlight of all the wood. It helps age the wood, make it a little more lived in. Make sure you get all of it. Don't forget that main deck. <laughs> How could you forget the main deck? And now some glamour shots of the final version of my pirate ship. Oh, she's magnificent. And I can't wait to set sail. Hey, well, you're welcome aboard me ship any time, Mr. Broken Terrain. Me and the boys, we want to thank you with this little ditty. <laughs> Ready, boys? What do you do with a drunken crafter? What do you do with a drunken crafter? What do you do with a drunken crafter? Early in the morning. Take him to the store and buy him craft paint. Take him to the store and you buy him craft paint. Take him to the store and you buy him craft paint. Early in the morning. <laughs> Thank you for me, ship. And thank you all for watching me video. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> all right. Well, as always, thank you for watching, everybody. Be kind to each other. Love one another. Have a great day. And craft on. Oh, still here? Here's a little more bonus video for you. Here's a shot of me disassembling the ship. Don't forget, we made sure this whole thing was completely modular. Fantastic. And it wouldn't be a broken terrain video without a story shot of the new piece of terrain in action. Here we see the captain has romanced the Naga Queen and while she wasn't paying attention, the crew tried to make off with her treasure. Watch out, pirates. You've been caught. Can you defeat the Naga Queen and her Nagas? <laughs>